All right, today we're going to talk about angles of rotation, section 13.2. Okay, so continue talking about some trig functions, or not really trig functions, we're talking about some trigonometry aspects of it. Um, talking about angles and then how they kind of rotate with respect to the coordinate plane. Uh, to draw an angle with a given measure, start with the initial side on the x-axis and rotate the terminal side to show the angle measure. Uh, the key here, do you all know the quadrants? Do you all know the quadrants? How many quadrants are there? There are four. And to label them, you need to go which way? Yes. Counterclockwise. So you got quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So how do I rotate? Well, when it's positive, I rotate counterclockwise or going along the quadrants. So I'm going to rotate counterclockwise. Now, 90 degree rotation will get us to the y-axis. 180 gets us all the way a straight line. 270 to back again the y-axis. Then if I go complete all the way around, how many degrees do you suppose I go? 360. And why is it 360? Because it makes like a whole circle all the way around. Okay. So again, we go clockwise or counterclockwise when it shows a positive angle measure. We're going to measure clockwise when it shows a negative measure. So again, negative, I'm just going to go the other way. It's the same thing here. Okay. Coterminal angles. Coterminal angles are angles with the same initial and terminal sides. You can find the measure of an angle that is coterminal with another angle by adding 360 or subtracting 360 from the given angle. What that means here is a 65 degree angle is the same thing as a 425 degree angle. Well, why does that make sense? Well, if I go 425, technically I'm going to go 360 degrees, and then I'm going to go another 65 degrees, and I get the same exact angle technically. Okay? So on your assignment today, you're going to get some like really re weird angles. And we'll look at them. They're going to be like 890 degrees. Well, why do 890 degrees? I would subtract 720, which was two circles, and end up getting like a 170 degree angle. Okay, so don't look at these really, really crazy angles. Look at how do you get them to a common angle between 0 and 360. Um, you can also do it with subtraction. So for example here, if I have 65 and I subtract 360, I end up getting 295. And that would be like if I went completely around the other way. So if I went the negative direction all the way around, well, that gets me to another 65 degree angle technically. Okay, um, it's not that bad. So let's look at angles of rotation here. So number one says draw an angle with a given measure in standard position. First one is a 150 degree angle. So remember, I have quadrants one, two, three, and four. And for those of you who say we never use Roman numerals, ha, huh, we do. Quadrants are labeled for Roman numerals. Um, if you were to draw the 150-degree angle, which quadrant would you say it'd be in? It'd be in quadrant what? Two. So to go 150 degrees, I'm going to kind of estimate here. Oh, 150 degrees there. There's the line right there. That's drawing a 150-degree angle. And we are always starting at zero or like x where the x positive direction is. Number two, negative 330. Now, negative direction means I'm going to go which way? I'm going to go backwards, which is clockwise, which makes sense, right? Now, which quadrant would that be in, negative 330? It'd be in quadrant 1, because I'm going to go all the way around. And I get a line that looks like that. There is the negative 333 degrees. Okay? All this stuff leads into, like, when you get a trig, you might do, like, some polar coordinates, um, angles of rotation. Um, does anybody here want to be a mechanic? Oh, you do a lot of stuff with mechanics, right? You do use a lot of the stuff, like wheel axes and um, stuff like that within the, um, I don't want to say the motor, but a bunch of stuff with cars. It's pretty cool stuff. Cool. Um, number three. It says find the measure of two angles that are coterminal with each angle. To find them that they're coterminal, we do two things. You can either add 360 or you can subtract 360. So the first one says to add 360. So 145 plus 360 gets me... What is it? 505 degrees. That would be the exact same angle. Okay, because I'd just go around a whole nother time and I'd get back to the same exact line. Or I could subtract 145. And if I subtract 145, I get 
negative to what? 215 degrees. So what that's saying is 145, 505, and negative 215 would all look to be the exact same angle if you were to plot it up there. Okay. Number four, negative 130. If I add 360 to that, what would my co-terminal angle be? 230 degrees. Or I could subtract 360, and then I get an angle of negative 490 degrees. So again, all three of those would be the exact same angle. You all right, Maddie? Yeah. Okay. Or are you like, man, this is way too easy? No, I'm trying to like, go back. Multitasking. Yeah. Number five, 210. If I add 360 to 210, I get what, Jack? Uh, 570. I get an angle of 570. Or I could subtract 360. And if I subtract 360, I get an angle of what, Monahan? Ooh, because it's actually negative 150. Nice job. Yep. So those are coterminal angles. That means they're the exact same. Um, they're the exact same angle and measure technically out there. Okay. Try these two. Draw an angle with a given measure in standard position. Take a couple seconds to try these two. Again, if you think of 6 as negative 390, it might be easier to think of it as another angle, so you don't have to go all the way around, right? Think of a coterminal angle. It makes it pretty easy to graph. But take a couple seconds to try these two. So number 6, I have negative 390. Again, you can think of negative 390, but that's another way to think of that angle. Think of negative 30 degrees. Because you think of a coterminal angle, it's a lot easier. Again, there's negative 30. Or you could go all the way around, and you still get negative 390. It's the same thing, right? You start thinking of those different angles. Number seven, 240. Which quadrant would 240 be in, Mark? One, two, three, or four? Yeah. That'd be an angle three. It'd be something like, oh, about like right there. That's not bad. Okay, good work. Um, try these two. Find the coterminal angles. So find the measures of a positive angle and a negative angle that are co-terminal with each given angle. Take a couple seconds to try those two. If I have an angle that is 28 degrees, if I add 360, I get an angle of what, Andy? 388. Oop, not four. 388, is that what you said? Yeah. Nice job. Uh, if I subtract 360, I get an angle of what, Jared? Gosh, my number's wrong. Negative 332, nice job. Number nine. If theta, theta, is 250 like degrees. Theta or theta? Theta. T-H-E-T-A. Theta. If theta is 250 degrees, what would you say? Is that like the sorority? Well, there's like fraternity and sororities. Yeah, all, yeah. They're all based yeah, off the Greek letters. letters yeah. So, I mean, there's many of them with it. I still don't understand. If you add 360, you get what, Jack? What? If you add 360, you get what? And if I subtract 360, I get what, Mark? Negative 110 degrees. Nice job. All right, next thing we're talking about is a reference angle. A reference angle for an angle theta in standard position is the positive acute angle. Positive acute angle formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. So what this means here, a reference angle... Reference angles are always made with the x-axis, okay? So it's the angle that is made with respect to the x-axis. Now, it's always an acute angle. So what's the, ang what's the angle have to be between then? Uh, that's zero and 90. Yeah, it's got to be between 0 and 90. So that's how you know whether you do this correctly or not, because the angle has to be between 0 and 90. So if it goes in the first position here, well, it's just whatever angle it is. If you go to the second quadrant, then you take 180 minus theta. Okay, oh, yeah. or basically you're finding the angle in between there. If you go to the third quadrant, you take theta minus 180. If you go to the fourth quadrant, it's 360 minus theta. Now you're like, well, how am I going to remember which way to do this? Don't. What do you have to remember? Reference angles are between what? 0 and 90. So when you do this, you just got to subtract until you get an angle between 0 and 90, essentially. Okay? So for example here, to find the reference angle for an angle theta, draw the angle in standard position. Find the reference angle formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. Find the angle measure theta prime. So I have 130 degrees. Well, the reference angle then has to be the angle left over there, which is 50 degrees. There's the reference angle. 
Or I can go 225 degrees, a little further. Well, if I go 225, then my reference angle is 45 degrees. Okay? There's always the angle made with respect to the x-axis. That's the angle we're looking at. All right? So let's look at number 10 here. I have theta equals negative 120. Well, if I think of it here, okay, there's negative 120. I want this angle right here, the angle that's made with the x-axis. Well, if that's negative 120, the leftover part there has to be how many degrees? 60 degrees. Nice job. Or I have number 11. If I go all the way around and get 315 degrees, well, what's my reference angle here have to be? How much? 45 degrees. Good work. Because it's then, that'd be like 360 minus 315. Shot. Or I can go 110 degrees. If I go 110 degrees, what is my reference angle here going to be? 70 degrees. Because I could do 180 minus 110. What's the key? All the reference angles have to be between? 0 and 90 degrees. Take a couple seconds and try these four. Now, number 13, you see that's 475, but I'd maybe find a coterminal angle and make it a little bit easier, right? So take a couple seconds to try those four. Okay, so number 13. It says 475 degrees. I would think of a coterminal angle. What's a coterminal angle that's easy to do than 475? Anybody? 115, yeah. If you subtract 360, you get 115 degrees. Well, what's the reference angle then for 115 degrees? The reference angle would be? Sean? What would the reference angle be then? Yeah, the reference angle would be 65 degrees. And again, how do we get the reference angle? It's all based on the coordinate plane, and it's the angles that are made with the x-axis there. So if you think about it, you know, 115 would be here, something like that. I want that angle right there. Uh, 14, 212 degrees. What would my reference angle be there, Andy? It would be 32. 32 degrees. Nice job. And again, 212, something like that. And I want that angle, 32. Uh, number 15, negative 96. What would the reference angle be there, Jack? I actually oh, Jack. Phil, what do you think? It is 84 degrees. Nice job. Because negative 96, well, I go clock or clockwise here. There's negative 96. I want that angle. It's 84 degrees. And last one, number 16, 320 degrees. Monahan, what do you say? 40. It is 40 degrees. Why would it go? 320 to go all the way around, something like that. And we are left with 40 degrees. I guess that's the reference angle. Good work, sir. Why would it um, Because reference angle is always positive. Good question. Reference angles, we're always talking about positive angles. Good question. It's like absolute value. It's called like the absolute value of it. Reference angle. Is that, would that help you out if you think of the absolute value? Here's your assignment.